Good evening, and welcome to The Voice of Hope. Thank you for opening up your living room or that place where you are, wherever that is, and allowing us to come right there where you are and speak hope to you. You know, the wonderful thing is that not only have you opened up that space where you are to let me enjoy this moment with you, but you've opened up that space that personal space to let him in, to invite him in. And so we thank you that we get to share this time together, that you've entrusted something so holy to us. We want you to go with us right now into the service, and we want you to worship with, not just watch, but worship with this wonderful choir as we celebrate and give thanksgiving to this most gracious, most generous God. Go with us now. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You're looking at me saying, why are you worshiping like that? Will I ask you a question? Ain't it all right? Brother Paul and Silas were tormented by hell. What they do? In the darkness of night, they praised and worshiped the Lord. Their chains were broken, and God opened the door. This night lasts forever with the morning ever come. Just lift up your praise to the Lord Most High. I promise He'll chase away the darkness, for He is your morning light. Some prophetic praise. Tell him who he is. Here we go. You are the Son of Christ, the Lamb of God. Oh, ain't it all 
Hallelujah. Yes, it's all right. Happy Thanksgiving. A couple of days has passed. But for the believer, every day is Thanksgiving. It would be so easy to look around us, every one of us, because we've all got stories, don't we? We've all got situations that are not exactly the way we wish they would be. It's not our plan going on. Things are not lined, aligned and, and, and fixed where we want them fixed. Relationships keep moving and finances won't get still and they keep sinking, if anything. And our health and those things that matter so much. All of us can look around and see those issues, those perplexities that we face and it would be so easy to become fixated with those and see the insufficiency of maybe funds or health or relationship in this holy day time. But I encourage you right now to make a decision, to make a choice, because that's exactly what it is. Make a decision to reflect upon to think on, to feed your thoughts and your soul, your spirit, with the goodness of God. You see, if you're watching me right now, you're, you're blessed. It says that God's giving you yet another opportunity to hear about his unfathomable love for you. To remind you that he sees where you are, you're not alone, and he's not going anywhere. You're breathing. You're alive. His blessings are on you. As we ponder those things and we begin to move toward him with a grateful heart, it is astounding, really, what he can do and how he multiplies that gratitude and things begin to come into our lives that we didn't even see coming. I'm talking about blessings. I'm talking about good things. And then the issues that seemed to, to keep us up at night begin to, to be restored and, and delivered and redeemed and made whole. Peace is spoken right into the midst of those. God can do so many things with a grateful heart. I ask you right now on this Saturday evening after Thanksgiving, why don't you take a bold step? I mean, it takes courage. A bold step and pick up your phone. You see the numbers at the bottom of the screen. And call our prayer partners right now. And yes, you can share your need with them because they will be honored to pray with you to this wonderful God about your needs. But before you do that, tell them something good that God has done in your life. Tell them something that you're thankful for. Tell them something that makes you look toward Him and realize He has not abandoned you. He has not forsaken you, and He's not going to. Begin cultivating a heart of gratitude, a spirit that says, God, you are all that, and I entrust all that I am and all that I have to you. And when we begin to do that, it just begins multiplying. And God does extraordinary things with it. Why don't you call our prayer partners right now and let them pray with you. And let them praise with you. And make this a new beginning. A genesis. A brand new start to this holiday, holy day season. It, it can change everything. It can change everything. Call them right now and let them pray with you. I want you to go back into the service. It says, Dr. Paul Lanier speaks such power, speaks such strength, speaks such life and such hope because he's speaking the living, breathing word of God that is for you. It is for you right now at this moment, right where you are. He's speaking to you. So listen up. Here we go. This morning I bring to you this breathing word of God, the sound of faith. Faith, we said, has a sound. It's the sound of God's complete yes reigning inside you. 
Read that back to me. Faith rises holy, completely within us. As we live holy in his word, faith declares God's shalom. Complete presence of God. He blesses you. He heals. He prospers. He, every good thing he brings into your life, that's shalom. Here's the problem. Too many of us are living our lives today trapped in the sound of someone else. Someone else spoke a sound over you when you were a boy or a girl. You grew up in a house where there was violent sound. Always slamming doors. Cursing one another. Predicting another's doom and demise. You always done that. You always will do it. Your mama was like it. Your daddy was like that. You're too old. You're too young. You're not smart enough. Too big, you're too little. And they made sounds that enveloped you, and you have spent a decade, two decades, maybe all your life living out somebody else's sounds spoken over you. God says you are to creatively release the sound of faith. We must interfere. With the atmosphere of little lack and loss by sounding our faith. Do you believe? I'm asking. It's not a trick question. Do you believe? Yes. Then we're saying that belief, that faith has a sound. It's more than a thought. It is thought, but it's more than a thought. It's words. It's mind and mouth moving together. The supernatural is directed. I'm about to bring you some teaching I need you to hear. The supernatural is directed by sound. The supernatural is directed by what? And God teaches us to sound things into being. He sounded, let there be light, and there was light. He sounded Lazarus, come forth, and the atmosphere changed. He sounded your sins are forgiven you, and the chains of depravity left them. Sounding your change, the supernatural is directed. I want to need you to do something right now. Close your eyes. What do you believe right now is God's perfect will for you? I need you right now to go to that place in that secret sanctuary of your soul. I need you to, to see in your own mind's eye what do you believe God has spoken into your life for you. Do you see it? Could you even articulate it in a sentence? God's will for me is, I've heard God say this to me. I'm moving according to his steps that he's ordered and they're leading me towards, what is it? Can you now see in your spirit, can you feel? Here's the question. Now that you've possessed it. The question is, are your words building that or blocking that? Here's some questions I, I need to pose to you, to myself this morning. Here's the first one. If today you owned only what you spoke yesterday, what would you have now? Read that back to yourself. If today I owned only what I spoke yesterday, what would I have now? If yesterday's sound determined my reality today, then what would I genuinely have today? What have I sounded into my... Now you see what he's talking about? I'm saying you ain't walking around with no horn. Your mouth is your trumpet. And the song, the words you speak, your conversation prophesies. Your conversation prophesies. You are telling your future, whatever that is, your words are determined. Come here. Here's something, folks. If you don't like the people in your life, you know whose fault it is, go look in the mirror. 
The sound that you emit from your horn, your conversation is calling. When Gideon blew a horn, 32,000 people heard his sound and came to him. There was a sound that attracted 32,000 people that today my life can change. If you don't like the folk in your life and they're driving you crazy, it's because of the song you keep singing. Listen, there are folk, and you know this, there are folk in your life, there are folk around that, that, that they, they say, I have, I'm, I'm just in an emergency. No, you ain't, baby. You're not in no This is your norm. This is no, no. Emergency is an unexpected, unscheduled, unplanned calamity. You weren't ready for it. You didn't see it coming because that's not your life. Your life is always moving this way. And all of a sudden, this strange occurrence took place. And we say, that's an emergency. But we have, I know this ain't even none of this in my notes. But we have raised up a generation now of professional emergenciers. Professional what? I didn't think I could say it again. I don't need y'all to. Emergency, that's pretty good. A generation of professional, I'm talking, you listen to them, you watch them, and they, they continuously live in a context of crisis. There's always something wrong with their body. There's always something wrong with their family. There's always something wrong. Listen, folk, that un baby, you ain't living with no emergency. That's your norm. And your mouth has created much of it and will establish it for the rest of your life until you learn to create a different. Am I right? 32,000 men said, I hear something different. Emergency rooms were not made for wellness care. It's for the sudden calamity. What atmosphere does my song create? Let me, 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 you owned only what you spoke yesterday. What would you have now? Here's, an, here's another question. If words create and establish your future, what's coming towards you now? Huh? If your words are creating your tomorrow right now, then what's headed towards you right now? What's your sound attract? Attract. What atmosphere are you creating? What does it release? If everybody's got a song, and if I ask, if I bring up your name and I say, what is their song? Oh, you know what their song is. Their song is nobody knows. <laughs> what about their song? I believe I can fly. When I was a in high school, I was in ROTC. I loved it. I really did love it. I was in it for, I think, about two and a half, close to that. In the 11th grade, I had to leave because of a tumor. I couldn't march anymore. But there was a, a gentleman, Sergeant Major Servey, and he had been in Korea and Vietnam. He, oh, man, these guys were real. And Colonel Dixon, and these were just incredible men. They had seen the real stuff. And he would say to us, gentlemen, in colorful language usually, <laughs> gentlemen, you will hear people say practice makes perfect. They lie. Perfect practice makes perfect. You can kick the ball all you want towards the goal, but until you kick it right and keep kicking it right, you're not going to. He said perfect practice. Well, I'm trying. Perfect. You say, well, perfect praise. The perfect sound that attracts God's blessing. The perfect sound that draws God's provision into your life. Well, I'm not perfect. How? The Word of God is perfect. And so as I am speaking the perfect Word of God that He spoke, 
perfectly to himself and I merely repeat back to God what he's already said to himself. I'm not saying practice makes perfect, but perfect practice makes perfect. Here's the thing Paul said in Corinthians, 1 Corinthians. If the war horn gives out an uncertain note, who will get ready for the fight? I was at a funeral, Shelly's daddy, the other day. I, these military things will mess you up, boy. And there's a wonderful soldier over there, bugler, and they play taps. No string section, no rhythm section, just the singular notes of a bugler. You know the sound, don't you? You know, da, 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 da. it's the most lonesome, haunting sound. Especially in ancient times of battle, you have hundreds, maybe thousands. We said 32,000 men a while ago. There's no way the commanding officer can run to each man and say, Attack! <laughs> Attack! <laughs> Attack! <laughs> Can't do that, but you're dead. <laughs> you just good and dead now. So what happened? They would play a sound. And listen, there were certain notes that you played in a pattern that said attack. And you knew that's the sound. Charge. Why are you charging? Why are you leaving? Because I heard the sound. There's another sound that says advance. There's another sound that says retreat. You better hurry up and know when retreat is played versus advance. Can be the same notes, but a different familiar pattern. Are we, are we coming? Do you know where I'm going with all this? It says here you need to know the pattern, be able to play certain sounds. What am I saying? I'm saying it, it screws all things up when you say this, and then you say this, and then you say this, and then you're running out in the war. Running out in the battle. Let your shofar play the specific sounds of the action you intend and need. What do you need from God? What do you want from God? What do you believe he's calling you to be, calling you to do? Then play that sound. Don't play I can't do all things through Christ. Don't play my God won't supply all my needs. Stop playing that song. And then standing out there on the battlefield holding your chauffeur. I don't know where God is. I was playing. You did not play the definite sound. You did not attract what you said you wanted. We need to develop and daily rehearse the sound of our faith. Rehearse does not mean I need to keep practicing because I ain't got it right yet. Rehearse means you need to rehearse. You need to hear yourself over and over saying something. Rehearse it. Don't worry about everybody else hearing it right now until they will event right now. You need to hear your own bugler blowing, yes. It is to repeat now, it is to rehear yourself sounding faith. Prophetic praise recalls. We say, I can recall that. What do you mean? We think I can remember. No, no. You recall. Call it again. Knock and it shall. That word knock and it shall be open. That word knock it means actually continuously knock. Keep knocking. Am I coming close to, to getting this across here? He say, I'm, I'm saying that we are to rehearse 
rehear it over and over because you keep saying it over the prophetic praise is to recall it doesn't simply mean I remember it that's a thought process to recall it means I call it again I say it I speak it again repeatedly not to bring a foreign knowledge to the omniscient God but to declare and celebrate it before the Lord finally God inhabits the praising sound of his people. Would you read that? Because that part is so important. Faith has a sound. If it's true, faith has a sound, praise has a sound, and God is attracted to a sound. If it's true that God is attracted to a sound, if it's true that God is attracted to a sound, if it's true that the blessings of God are attracted to a sound I make, is it any wonder that hell comes against sound so much in the church? Why are you weird? We got folks, I can't, I'm not staying in your church, it's so loud. Well, honey, I hate to tell you, here's a heads up, this is as quiet as it's going to be in eternity, because in hell... Everybody's screaming, and in heaven it's going to be loud because me and you is going to be there. <laughs> you know how we are. The Bible says we're going to have a glorified body. Why do you think you need a glorified body for? Because when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, your ears can't take it. And so that is why when I step on this platform, and those of you who have known me for so long, you know that if you got in my car today and went home with me, you may not hear me say one word between now and next Sunday. I just ain't, I don't talk much. I just don't say much. I'm just, I mean, I just really not very, but when I get up here, I'm loud. I speak loudly. I, I, I play loudly. Why? Because I am emitting a sound for a particular desired result. I know what I need. I know what I want. I know what God intends for me to have, but he's not going to release it until I have emitted and released a sound that draws him. So it can be too loud for you. It can be too fast or too slow for you. It can be all those two. It's too this. It's too that. It can be all that stuff that, that, that troubles you. But I ain't making it for you. I'm making it towards that place. And as I emit it, as I release it, as I direct a sound, he responds to sound. Thank you. Thank you for sharing this time with us. I pray that your heart has been encouraged, that your soul has been strengthened, and that you are reminded all over again that he is God and he is not silent. And he is speaking into your life. And he's speaking into mine. Oh, may we not miss it. It's life changing. Listen, he's speaking to you. He's longing to invade every part of your life and turn it upside down and bring something beautiful, something most wonderful out of it. Be reminded of his love for you tonight. We leave you by reminding you that because Jesus Christ lives, there is always hope for you. Good night.